Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head to Belgium once again. As I promised you, I'm going to try and make sure and review some more Belgian beers for you over the next little while because they were neglected for a very long time. But for this one we are going to go to the little town of Silly and do my first review from Brasserie de Silly. And this is quite an interesting beer actually. This one is the Scotch Silly. As you might have guessed by the name, it comes in at 8% ABV. And um, it should be a really interesting beer this one. If you've watched my channel before you will know that I love trying scotch ales from different parts of the world. This is the first Belgian scotch ale that I've tried actually so definitely looking forward to this one and this of course was another beer that was very kindly sent to me by Davor Shiritz in Slovenia so a huge thank you to Davor for sending this one up to me. I can't remember exactly what he said about this beer but you know Davor sends me some pretty awesome things so I'm sure it will be quite a nice one. I think he just wanted me to try this one because he thought it was unusual so yeah a big thank you to Davor for sending this one up to Scotland from Slovenia and I'm sure it will be a nice one and I hope you guys enjoy my take on it. There's a bit of interesting history behind why there's Scotch ales brewed in Belgium as well so I'll tell you a bit about that too. But anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a bit about the history of the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my future reviews that hopefully I can do from Brasserie de Silly. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel has a geography based tagging system them, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city or state, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there of course for all the Belgian beer reviews that I've done for you before and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys and the support that you give the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Brasserie de Silly then. So the roots of Brasserie de Silly go back to the year 1850 when Marceline Hippolyte Mainsbruchen bought a farm called Sens de la in the Hainaut region of Belgium. As I said to you, this brewery is based in the small town of Silly, which is about 40 kilometres or so to the southwest of Brussels. It's a little bit to the north of Mons as well, and then you have Charleroi, which is a bit to the kind of southeast as well. So it's actually very close to the border of France. But Marceline started brewing beers for the local workers, so he was making a Saison for the farmers, a Grisette for the miners, and a beer Belge for everybody else. So his son Adeline took over the brewery and actually won a medal for his beers in Paris. But after the death of his father, he continued brewing with his sisters and they were very lucky in the fact that they managed to save their copper kettles from falling into the hands of the Germans during the First World War and this meant that they were one of the few breweries in the region that was actually able to expand during the interwar period. But after the Second World War Adeline decided that he wanted to produce some bottom fermented beers in addition to the top fermented ones that he was producing before so they released a triple bock and also a pills as well. I believe the pills was released in 1950. That was becoming a very popular beer style at the time and for a very short period they were producing their own Trappist beers as well but these didn't catch on and they were withdrawn from it from sale really quite quickly. So the Van der Hagen brothers which was Jean-Paul and Didier they joined the brewery in the early 1970s and the brewery name was then changed officially to Brasserie de Silly in 1973 but then they took over the Tenstead de Croze brewery in nearby Egen uh, if I've pronounced that correctly Egen if that's really, it's a village that's a little bit to the northeast of Scilly of course, but this helped them grow in popularity because the local beers from that brewery had quite a bit of popularity in the region and they've continued to expand their range ever since then and they've got a bigger capacity now than they did have before and I think they actually run two breweries and they run various cafes around that little region of Belgium as well. But the brewery is now run by Bertrand who's the son of Jean-Paul and then his cousin Lionel as well. I believe Lionel actually manages the brewery whereas Bertrand is in, in charge of the, the brewery and things like this but today they produce around 15,000 hectolitres of beer and they export to various countries including Italy, uh, America and I think they were saying the Australia and stuff like that as well but this one of course made its way to Slovenia which was where Davor picked it up but they've got quite an extensive range of beers if you go into their rate beer page They've got a lot of different beers under the Silly name. They've got some of the beers under the Tenstead de Crow's name as well. And they've, they've just got a big range of things. So there's a lot of beers you can try from this company. I think a few of the, the breweries kind of operate independently, but there is the sort of parent company that kind of uh, holds them together. And that is fairly common in Belgium, actually. There's quite a few of the, the, the slightly bigger breweries own the smaller ones that are kind of run independently around the country. But yeah, a really interesting brewery, this one. And uh, yeah, let's get on to the actual tasting and stuff of this beer. If you want to learn more about these guys of course you can check out the uh 
the brewery website in the description below. But like I mentioned to you, this one is an 8% Scotch Ale. So as I mentioned, there is a, um, quite an interesting reason why Scotch Ales are brewed in Belgium. And the main reason for this was that the Scottish soldiers were actually quite often stationed in the little part of Belgium that wasn't taken over by the Germans. So apparently this ale was developed by with the help of Jack Payne, who was a Scottish soldier uh, billeted in Scilly during the First World War. And he actually stayed and worked with the brewery for a period after. There's a couple of other breweries, I think, have Scotch ales as well. Gordon Beer is another one, I think. Uh, Gordon Scotch Ale is another one that I've seen from Belgium as well. And that's one that I need to review for you at some point in the future as well. But it's quite cool that this brewery does have a little bit of a, a kind of Scottish influence in it as well. And that's the main reason, like I say, why you'll find some Scotch ales in Belgium. So there you can see, nicely presented this one, a little bit of an almost kind of tartan pa pattern at the top there. And uh, you can see the Brasserie de Silly symbol is just behind the scotch symbol there and it is kind of stamped over on the bottle cap as well it's this kind of guy holding his sword which is quite nice and uh, it says on the top here what's that that must be uh, a best that must be a best before date which is the 18th of August 2016 so this beer will just be at a nice point it's a couple of months away from its expiry date and the Belgian beers do tend to age a little bit in the bottles which is quite nice so without further ado then let's get this one out and we'll get on with the tasting then just need to be careful with this because Belgian beers as we know have a habit of exploding although this one seems to have behaved itself that's one of the things I find you always, always, always have to watch when it comes to reviewing Belgian beers. They do have a habit of just going bang. Uh, the Trappist beers, not so much. Um, but the other, some of the other ones that I've had have exploded on me when I've done reviews and things. So you have to react very, very quickly. Always be prepared if you're tasting Belgian beers for explosions. But yeah, as you can see, that's poured a really lovely... If I hold it up to the light, it's actually a really quite nice ruby chestnut colour. There's quite a few little tiny bits of sediment floating around. Again, that's a trait of Belgian beer. I'm not sure how well you can see it on the camera, but this beer is actually crystal clear. It's a nice kind of deep red um, almost, it's just it's a deep kind of ruby chestnutty colour. There's a solid half finger of a frothy beige tan head on this one, which is just fading away to be a very thin foamy layer. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and quite a few little ones just going up towards the bottom of the head there. But um, overall, you know, it looks really nice. It's a lot redder than some of the Scotch ales that I've come across before, but uh, I'm sure it will be a nice beer. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. That, actually, I was expecting something quite different from the aroma. I have to say that. I was expecting the Belgian yeast to be a lot more prominent in this one. I was expecting the kind of Scotch ale malts, but then with that big Belgian-y, bready, yeasty character to it. But, you know, this one's got a little bit of that Belgian-y character, but it does smell really quite Scottish. That's really interesting, actually. So, yeah... With this, there's definitely there's a good bit of a brown bready character in there. You can get a little bit of that Belgian -y yeast note out of it. A lot of caramel, a lot of kind of toffee and butterscotch. It has that sort of t that lighter uh, butterscotchy note to it, which is really interesting. It's a little bit toasted as well, I would say. Maybe some biscuit as well. It's got an almost kind of medicinal quality to it. You can pick that up with this beer. But it smells really, really nice. I'm surprised. The thing, I'm just surprised with this one how close it smells to some of the Scotch ales that I've had here. The medicinal quality makes it a little bit kind of different. It does remind me of the Tempest, uh, the old parochial, a little bit that I reviewed a few videos ago. It does have a little bit of the boozy character that you would expect that I found in that one, although it was a big 11% beast. But this smells really, really nice. I mean, like I say, there's a sort of medicinal kind of herbal quality to this beer. But yeah, some a little bit of earthy hop in there. You can pick up a little bit of the sort of grassy notes too. And there's quite a bit of a dried fruit. You know, there's some raisins, sultana sort of thing coming out of this beer. But it smells really, really nice. I'm just surprised at how close the aroma is to some of the scotch ales that I've come across before. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of your beer before you actually get stuck into it. Because this has some really, really interesting things. But yeah, it smells good. There's a little bit of a woody and nutty undertone to it as well, and it has a wee bit of a kind of apple, sort of a, an apple orchard kind of fruit thing. 
but it smells really really nice so just take a little bit of time and enjoy this beer before you get stuck into it and it, like I say it is really cool to see a little bit of Scottish influence going on uh, over in Belgium there of course it's, you see a lot of Scottish guys died unfortunately over in Belgium because Britain, France and Germany wanted to play imperialist games but that's by the by um, but yeah, really, really nice beer, smelling beer this one, so let's get stuck in. This is the Scotch Silly from Brasserie de Silly in Belgium. Slange, Skull, Prost, whatever you want to say for this one. Cheers, and thank you to Davor. That's really quite nice, actually. It does, I mean, it smells quite similar to uh, a Scottish Scotch ale, if that makes sense, but it, it, it does come across quite differently. It's big and oily, this, but at the same time it's wet, which is quite unusual. Yeah, I mean, the mouthfeel, is the, the, the mouthfeel of this one is what's taken me by surprise initially, because it's got a lot of that oily character in the beginning, and then it just quite suddenly just morphs into being this to, to being quite a wet beer more than anything else but it does taste really quite nice but yeah that's a really quite nice beer I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again I would say that about it straight away and it's really quite different in feel to a lot of the other Belgian beers that I've had before so let's just analyse this a little bit more. As I always say, when it comes to scotch ales and stouts and things like this, sugar the beer around your palate and just let your whole mouth adjust before you start uh, analysing too much what's going on in the flavour. But yeah, for this one, there's a nice sort of brown bready malt base to it. You can feel a little bit of that Belgian yeasty character in there, but it's nowhere near as kind of prominent as it is in a lot of the other Belgian beers that you're going to get. This beer, in terms of the malts, and the yeast comes across a lot closer to a Scotch ale than I was certainly expecting. It just doesn't have as big a, a kind of bready, yeasty presence as a lot of other Belgian beers do. It's certainly different, and I mean, I'd be interested to try one or two more of these and see if there's a sort of trait with these Belgian brood styles, and it is it is a little bit stronger than some of the other ones that you would have expected in Scotland. I think normally in the, the Scotch ales, this one to me, I think this one's probably some like somewhere between a 70 and an 80 shilling, and uh, I think it's somewhere between that rather than being between the 80 and 90 as a lot of the American ones are. This one's got a bit more of a kind of darker, roasty brown sugar character to it than the American ones do. The American ones are very, very sweet and fruity, whereas the Scotch ones do have a little bit more of that kind of grainy roastiness to it and a little bit of chocolate and things, and usually some peated character as well. But this one's definitely going down the route of having an almost slightly treacle flavour to it, which is quite interesting. But like I say, a bit of brown bready malt there. On top of that, you can feel a little bit of graininess. But there's a lot of interest in brown sugars there. There's some sweet caramel. There's a little bit of roasted kind of treacle note in the middle of your palate. And you can get some of this almost butterscotchy flavour as you progress further and further into the aftertaste. It's a really interesting beer. And there is this sort of medicinal quality to it in the middle of your palate as well, which is really quite interesting. And that's something that you won't often find in Scotch ales. I mean, I think the old, the old parochial from Tempest I reviewed a few videos ago definitely had that. And it must just be the thing, as the beer gets a little bit more boozy, it becomes more medicinal. This is 8%, so it is kind of in the rate. It is a little bit higher, I think. The flavour profile, to me, comes across as being sort of a 70 or 80 shilling, like I said. But the booze content is a bit higher than I think you would expect from that. But it is nice. I certainly, as I said, I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink this again. The hoppy side of the beer is quite simple. I mean, in the back corners of the palate, there's a little bit of earthiness in there. As you come further forward, you can feel a little bit of a floral character, but there's an almost herbal quality to the beer as well. And round the very front curve of the palate, there's a little bit of a, a lighter kind of grassy note in there. I think they said it was Kent Goldings and Hallertau hops that they used in this beer. So it's interesting. I think the herbal character and the earthiness will be coming mainly from the English hop in this one, and the grassiness and the slightly floral character is from the Hallertau, the German Hallertau. But that's a nice beer. 
Um, there's quite a bit of fruity character to this as well. If you just go behind the front curve of the palette, there's that little oily bubble where um, you get those little fruity esters. And for me, it's really interesting. There's a little bit of an almost pear apple note to this, but there's quite a bit of red, juicy fruit as well, so you can get some figs. There is a wee bit of raisin coming out of this one as well. It's got a lot of kind of candied uh, red fruit esters. It reminds me of these little heart-shaped sweets you get in the Haribo Star Mix. It has that sort of candied fruity flavour to it. It's almost a little, it has quite a bit of medicinal quality to it, this beer as well, I think. That sort of herbal, uh, medicinal, almost cough syrupy thing, which is quite interesting. But it's certainly quite a nice beer, and it's a change of pace. I do love seeing how people interpret the Scotch ale across the world, and the Belgians going by this one seem to have a really quite interesting interpretation of it as well. And it is cool that it was developed by a, or that they were helped in the development of this beer by a Scottish soldier. And so you can you can detect that it has its own little Belgian twist to it, but it is leaning towards the kind of roasty uh, caramel character that you'd expect of the original Scotch ales. I always, as I've said before, I always find the American ones. I do like them, but they just lean a little bit too much towards the the sort of sweet sugary side of things and fruitiness for me. These ones, the, it was always meant to have a bit of a, a kind of warming quality to it, and the Belgian version has certainly captured that for me. But it's a nice beer, and ve and I'm glad that Davor decided to send this one up to me as well. This has been a really interesting one to try. Um, in terms of the mouthfeel of this beer. I would say it's mid-bodied. It's not quite as heavy as some of the Scotch ales that I've come across before. And in fact, probably for the Scotch ale category, for me, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, the carbonation is very smooth. It's got an oily mouthfeel, but then it progresses into a wetter mouthfeel as you get further and further into the beer. There's a good bit of malty sweetness to this one. There's a bit of roasted character to the malt as well. The hops are very, very smooth. There's not really a great deal of bitterness to this beer at all. It really leans towards the kind of... Uh, it definitely leans towards the, the malty side of things. And there's a little bit of a kind of juicy fruit note to it as well. And that medicinal herbal quality that it has is quite interesting too. But I'm definitely glad that I got to try this one. And it is cool to try a Scotch ale from another country. I'm pretty sure that's the first Scotch ale I've ever tried from Belgium. So it's been really cool to try this one. And I hope you guys have enjoyed my take on this beer. So yeah, once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Do let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below if you have tried it before. And uh, just let me know what other beers I should be trying from Brasserie de Silly as well because they do have quite an extensive range and on the basis of this one it would be quite interesting to try some of their more classic Belgian styles of beer and see what they're like so yeah hopefully in the future I can return to these guys but once again thank you to Davort for sending me this beer the Scotch Silly from Brasserie de Silly in Silly in the Hainaut region in the southeast of Belgium so slam you just now and I will catch you guys very soon it's been really cool to try my first Belgian Scotch sale cheers